So probably the most requested feature in the Live Passes and AOP widget since the year it's been out has been the ability to create presets for the tool. This feature is now available, as you can see up here, and we're going to walk through how to use it. So we have our sequence here. It's our metahuman shooting through a glass window. I have the hair disabled to speed this up. So if we go over to our content browser and we go to our render passes widget, and under our render passes widget, you'll see a bunch of folders here. And we're going to take a look at the presets. We're going to go over the technical aspect of the presets and how they're working. Um, if you want to skip this part, I'll leave a time code uh, in the description and on screen where you can skip ahead. So basically, we have this primary data asset blueprint. And within this blueprint, we have all of the options for our render passes widget. Now, we can't really edit them in here. This wouldn't provide us like um multiple different files to include multiple different presets so the way that we do that then is by creating data assets so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to create a new preset so create a folder and i'm going to name this z0 z0 0060 just a code for this shot so within this folder, I can now create presets to render out for layout, grooming, animation tests, any other departments, including your full lighting renders. In order to do that, we're just going to go ahead, right click and type in data asset. So we need this data asset to connect. So in order to do that, we're going to type that in BP underscore presets. That's the name of our blueprint. Hit select. Now we can name this. We're just going to do a lighting. So Z underscore zero 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 underscore zero zero six zero underscore lit. So if we double click that, we will see our data asset. And now we have all of the options that we normally have in our render widget. We can see here the asset type is from the BP underscore presets class. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out. Push in my target sequence. I want to make a raster render. We can go further into these uh, resolution presets here. Um, I have a set number of presets for different resolutions to go with different aspect ratios, as well as just general 16 by 9 aspect ratios, as you can see at the top. I've also included some aspect ratios that are specific to certain cameras. Um, so this is just a way to speed up workflows and make things go a little bit faster. For this project, I'm using a 2K flat, which is a 2K render with a 1.85 by 1 aspect ratio. So as you can see, this does not update the movie resolution preset here, but it will update it in the widget. Um, the thing that you'll have to notice is that if we come over here to our widget, if we set a specific preset, like a 2K flat, I mentioned this before in the whole widget overview, you can't change it in here. It will always set back to what the um, preset resolution is. But if we go to custom, it'll keep the movie resolution preset we selected through this drop down, but you can now adjust it. So if I wanted to make this a half res render, I can just divide both um, the X and Y by two. And now we have a 2K flat half res render. And if we want to go back, we can just select the 2K flat. So back in the presets, we have our resolution preset set. And I'm going to set this for the third version of this render. And remember, everything in here can be changed in here later on. So if we just save this out now, and we search for it, we'll see that what we've done so far has changed and if i wanted to increase the version number for each render 
I can just do that here and it will update. So back in the preset window, we're going to set our render to render as an EXR. Um, if you don't set this, it'll render as a PNG image. We're going to set to include alpha, disable multi-sample effects preset on our compression. I want to make this a ZIP compression. It's a good compression quality for images with low amounts of noise. Set our output path. We're not going to overscan this render. We will need to render some warm-up frames. So I'm going to render 10 warm-up frames. I don't need to set any sensor actor layers. I don't need to set any sensor data layers. And I'm going to keep my console presets what the default values are right here. So going into samples, I'm just going to set up my sample count. I don't need reference motion blur because this only works if render mode is set to path tracer. My anti over, I want to override the anti aliasing to none. So I'm going to click that on. The rest of these I'm going to keep the same. I want to render this with an ASUS uh, color workflow. So I'm going to set my source color to linear and my output to ASUS CG. And as always, the I'm going to keep the disable tone curve preset to true. And this will make sure that it does not render with the tone curve or let that Unreal originally has on the file. Going into the AOV section, I'm going to render a primary and I'm going to render my light groups. Because this is a shot in a larger sequence, I need to figure out which light groups I don't want to render. So you can see here and in the sequencer, I have a bunch of lights disabled because I don't want them in the scene, which means I also don't want them to be rendered out. Now, the thing is, is I have actor tags already on all of these lights. So by default, the tool is going to pick it up. If it sees an actor tag on a light, it's going to render it as a light group. So I need to tell the tool not to render it. So if I go back to my preset here, I can look at this exclude light group. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab all of the lights with the light tags I don't want to render. So I have all of my lights that I don't want to be rendered included in here. Now, the good thing about this is because these lights have light tags on them, you wouldn't even have to disable them in your sequencer because they have light tags on them. The tool will hide them by default. And then when they're included in this exclude light group, they just won't render that light pass. So although they'll be included in your primary, they won't be included in any light group renders. Um, you'll see the option above it, which is override light group preset. Um, I've included this in here in case you want to do a workflow where you only render lights that you select. So if you instead didn't want to do this, what you could do is add all the lights that you want specifically to render in the scene. Like this. So now, these three lights are going to be the lights that render in the scene. And if I wanted to go include all of my other uh, six zero shots, I could. I could just grab the actor tags from them and include them in here. And it will only render the lights I have included in the override light group. That's another way that you can do it. Um, I generally use this um, preset. I generally use this option to render lights if I'm doing a render and I see that one of the light groups is not working in my compositing and I only want to re-render that one light group, I'll just come in here and not only not here the presets, but come in here and just add that one light in here. So I'll put my whole presets in here and then instead of changing all of the school light group, you can always just hit our remove elements. But generally what I'll do is I'll have these override light groups. I'll just come in, even though I have all the stuff in here, say I just want to render my environment light, I need to re-render it. I'll just type that in here, hit render. It'll just render my environment light. I mean, as long as I have just light groups checked. 
So we're back in our presets. So for this pass, I do need to render an emission. So I'll check that off. For this one, I'm going to keep fog split off. Um, I want the fog to be able to render with my lights. I have volumetric lights coming from these light posts here. So I want that to stay on. Um, sometimes I'll just render these lights completely separate from the scene. For additional light passes and AOVs, I'm going to click that on because I do want my opacity preset roughness spec and diffuse. I want these for the glass material to be rendered per light. Going into the tech AOVs, I'm going to click all of these on, including my custom tech. And I have a custom depth pass for this shot. So I'm going to include that in there. That's it for that section. Uh, coming down the IDs, I'm going to leave my cryptomats as they are. I don't, I want three to render and I don't want to disable them. And we'll come down to the other tab down here. Um, so with these tabs, these are basically just to exclude objects in the render. So maybe they're visible in the sequencer, but you want to exclude them from this render. You can add them to the exclude objects preset. Trace objects, this is for creating shadow passes. So if you want to hide an object, but keep it shadow, you can do that here. Um, but again, it won't update this in the sequencer. It won't create any overrides in the sequencer. I have another tool that does that called the Sequencer Pro Plus. This will just do this on render level. Okay, so now that I have all my options set up, I'm just going to save this. And I'm going to just drag it in from my render presets. You can drag it, you can search it, you can even select the one and edit it, and it'll come up here. I have a quick way to get into it. But you can see it has added in all our options now. And you'll see here that my for my flu light group that um, all of the actor tags that I want to exclude in the light passes are here. But if I wanted to include one for whatever reason, let's say I wanted to include this blue key, even though it's nowhere close to this character, I can just delete here and now it will be included. And let's say I wanted to add that back. I can just reload my presets and it's back to being included. And the good thing about this is that if I had other uh, variations I wanted to create off this, I can create a variation. I can create this to use for different render passes. So let's say I wanted it for lit uh, environment, and then I want another one for lit character. I wanted to render the character and the environment on a separate pass. Then I can do that here and then just include them and render it twice with both presets. Just come in here and add in all of the environment to use the exclude uh, object preset. And the same for the character, where I can exclude the character from the environment pass pre and it will render without. Another thing that could be good for your workflow is when you have to render different um, elements from different departments. So if you're working in layout and you need to do a, a layout render, you can basically set this up for your settings in layout and have completely different settings for your, for your lighting, for your grooming, for your animation to show your animation in the scene. You can set that up for each and different render. We do have a new option coming soon that will allow you to update the output name. So that's coming soon and that will really benefit people who are, who need to render, um, for different departments. And just remember that again, you can change anything in here if needed. It won't affect the saved data asset, but it will render with the adjustments that you've made um, from your presets. If you have any other further questions about the presets, you can leave a comment below or join our Discord. Uh, it's in the description. But now that I have this, I'm going to hit render.